Hi, this is Teacher Randy. Welcome to the week 4 of our virtual tutorial in Technology and Livelihood Education 6 ICT and Entrepreneurship. In this video, we will tackle Lesson 6. The purpose of this video presentation is to provide a remote learning experience for the pupils while they are studying at home. The most essential learning competency that will be addressed in this lesson is participate in video and audio conferences in a safe and responsible manner. This lesson is important because it will introduce you to the nature of video conferencing and how it works. It will improve your ability to connect and communicate with other people from anywhere in the world. With the global health crisis brought by COVID-19, video conferencing becomes a more practical way of conducting meetings, classes, and conferences in the comfort of our homes. In the previous lessons, we talked about the things that we need to consider in posting and sharing materials in wikis and blogs in a responsible manner. Before we discuss the new lesson, let us look into the previous lesson by answering these questions. You can answer it orally or you may get a sheet of paper where you can write your answers. Number 1. It is a collaborative web tool that allows users to create, edit, and share information on a website using any web browser. A. Video conferencing B. Wiki C. Blog What is your answer? The correct answer is letter B. Number 2 question. A wiki user that you only meet online is asking for your password. What are you going to do? Letter A. I am not going to give my password to that person and I will tell my parents about it. Letter B. I am going to give my password to any person I meet online. Letter C. I will not hide my password. What is your answer? The correct answer is A. Number 3 question. Also known as weblog, it is a personal online journal that contains short entries written and updated by a blogger. What is it? A. Teleconference B. Wiki C. Blog What is your answer? If you answered letter C, good job, you are correct. Question number 4. How can you use blogs responsibly? A. Bashing or making personal attacks to persons. B. Sharing pictures owned by other people without asking their permission. C. Posting facts and avoiding the spread of fake news. What is your answer? If you answered letter C, good job, you are correct. Number 5 question. Who use blogs and wikis? A. Businessmen B. Students C. Both A and B What is your answer? If you answered letter C, good job, you are correct. Congratulations for getting the correct answers! Now, let us talk about the new lesson. Participating in video and audio conferences in a safe and responsible manner. What is video conferencing? Video conferencing, also called as teleconferencing or web conferencing, is an online meeting wherein two or more people can see, hear, and talk to each other using computer networks to send audio and video data in real time. In hosting or joining video conferences, you need to install the app. Some examples of video conferencing applications that allow direct video and voice communication via internet are Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, Skype, and Messenger. You can install these apps in your cell phone or computer 
so that you can use them anytime. The diagram shows the requirements for joining or hosting a video conference. You must have a computer or cell phone with a good access to the internet, a web camera, microphone, speakers, headset, or headphones, and a browser or video conferencing app like Zoom, Google Meet, Messenger, Skype, and Teams. Some cell phones have built-in camera and speaker. You just need to connect into the internet through mobile data or Wi-Fi. You can also connect a microphone to your cell phone if there is a need to enhance the loudness of your voice. It can also be connected to earphones or headsets. Video conferencing is widely used in different fields, from homes, schools, to business establishments. At home, it helps families and friends to stay connected to loved ones from different places in and out of the country. In school, it may enable students to see each other, share documents, and discuss lecture even if they are in different cities or even countries. It may also allow virtual field trips. In businesses, video conferencing is efficient to use not only during meetings but also when dealing with customers. Product demonstration, for instance, may be executed more effectively through video conferencing rather than executing it personally. The benefits of using video conferencing includes it reduces travel time and expenses since it allows people to communicate to several places in an instant without having to leave the office. It allows people from different fields and places to easily collaborate and share ideas with each other. It enables showing demonstrations or procedures to large audience that may come from several places from all over the world. Users of video conferencing apps form groups called e-groups. It is also known as online or web communities. E-groups are groups of people who use internet services such as email, chat systems, discussion boards, and social networking sites to communicate and collaborate with one another. To be able to use video conferencing in a safe and responsible manner, you must be familiar with these do's and don'ts. Do be courteous to other participants. Do speak clearly. Don't shout. Do keep body movements minimal. Don't interrupt other speakers. You must also maintain eye contact by looking into the camera. Do not carry on side conversations. You must also dress appropriately and don't wear noisy jewelry. Don't make distracting sounds. You must mute your microphone when you are not going to speak. And lastly, be yourself and have fun. Congratulations! We have just discussed participating in video and audio conferences in a safe and responsible manner. It is now time to test our understanding by doing the following activities found in the learning activity sheet. If you do not have a copy of the learning activity sheet yet, you can download it through the link found in the description of this video. Activity 1. Fact Checking You are going to read the sentences carefully. In the blank, you are going to write true if the statement is a fact and write false if it is incorrect. For example, video conferencing allows people from different fields and places to easily collaborate and share ideas with each other. If your answer is true, you are going to write the word true in the blank. If your answer is false, you are going to write the word false in the blank before the number. Activity 2 is titled, What Apps? In the diagram, you are going to write the video conferencing apps in each circle. Activity 3 is safe and responsible video conferencing. In the blank, write do if the statement tells responsible video conferencing. Write don't if otherwise. For example, blank maintain eye contact by looking into the camera. If you think 
this statement tells responsible video conferencing, you are going to write the word do. If you think it does differently, you are going to write don't. For activity 4, video conferencing through Google Meet. Before the meeting schedule, download and install the Google Meet app in your phone, tablet, or computer through Google Play or Play Store. During your meeting schedule, go to a web browser and enter the link. You will be directed to Google Meet, then click Join Now. The link will be provided by your teacher. After doing the activities, it is time to reflect on your own learning. Check the column for thumbs up if you think you can do these statements. Check the column for thumbs down if you think you still need to improve. For example, I can define video conferencing. If you think you can do this statement, check thumbs up. If you think you still need to improve, check thumbs down. Congratulations for finishing this lesson. Hope you enjoy learning with me. Do not forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so that you keep yourself updated with the tutorial videos. See you in the next virtual tutorial.